Welcome to Sermons from the Vault. It has been a while, but today we will get back on the Sermons in the Vault collection, which is a collection of sermons from my dad, the late Pastor Luther E. Smith. And today's sermon was recorded 3 9 1986. Text the church and its mission coming from Colossians chapter 1, verses 23 through 25. So, enjoy this collection of sermons from the vault. Need to know this. 
this that today Sister and Brother Carl would have been married 29 years. Now, first of all, 
first of all, you know, the Bible tells us that the church is my Lord's bride. And as much as Sister Carr has been to Brother Carr for 29 years, the church is my Lord's bride. And I'm so glad to be a part of it because, you see, he has promised to protect the church. And even the gates of hell shall not prevail. I don't, you know what? If you're in the church, can nothing bother you. Did Jesus Christ said in himself, and I believe what he said. I ain't worried about what nobody else said, but I believe what Jesus said. Uh -huh. He said, upon this rock, I, I build my church, uh -huh. and the gates of hell shall not prevail again. Now listen, if you get in the church, I'm talking about showing up and then have it in you. You, you. you don't have to worry about what your enemies want to do to you. They can't hurt you. They can't harm you. Now, if you feel that you can be hurt or harm, you're not really in the church. And the church in you. Because Jesus said, don't fear him who are able to destroy the body. But Jesus got the power to destroy both body and soul. And I tell you, if when he he knows how to destroy. So I want to talk about the mission of the church. We we take it so lightly. We we we, we speak of it, you know, so lightly. It just seems like when we're talking about the church, uh, we're talking about going to work the next day or something. Well, we, that people get more enthusiasm out, out of their job right. than they do out of being a part of the church. Yeah. Now, if you are in fact a part of the church. Then you sure enough are part of the mission that is of the church. The Living Bible paraphrase, and I like this, said the only condition is that you fully believe the truth. And I like that. Standing in it. Stood fast and firm. Now you got to be in here firm, y'all. You know. Strong in the law. Huh? Yeah. Right. Convinced of the good news that Jesus died for you. You got to really know this. Huh? Uh -huh. And, and, and never shifting. Listen, you you do me. Do, do do you see what I mean? Uh, you, you got to be stood fast. Huh? Amen. Never shifting from trusting him to save you. you you got to have that confidence. This is the wonderful news that comes to each of you. And is now spread all over the world. I like this. Now this is going to leave everybody without an excuse. The Bible said, and the living Bible paraphrase said, here in the first, and I, Paul, have the joy of telling it to us. Now, you see, those who would tell the word of God, you got to tell it with joy. I said a few moments ago, it doesn't matter what the folk are saying, man, or whether they get mad and let them go on to hell or where they're going, but you ought to find joy in telling it. Listen, many times you don't get the joy out of people accepting it because there are those who were rejected like they did that of Christ. Right. But the joy, Paul said, here comes from telling them what thus said the Lord. Yes, oh, it's a happy time and the angels get happy when, when one repent of their sin. But, but you don't stop telling it because folk reject it. Right. Is that right? Amen. So, verse 24 says, but part of my work is to suffer for you. Now, this is Paul suffering for somebody else. And all of us who will be a part of the mission of the church, you may as well get ready to suffer for others. Amen. Now, not only will you just suffer for your own sake, Amen. But you go suffer for others. Amen. Matter of fact, the Bible said, if any man come up after me, let him first deny himself. Didn't he say? Now, when you're denying yourself, don't you think you're denying? Now, listen, Jesus Christ don't need nothing. 
So if you're denying yourself, it's Satan for others. Is that right? He said, and I'm glad for, I'm helping to finish the remaining of Christ's suffering for his body. And that's the church. You ought to be glad to be a part of this work because you're helping to carry out the remaining of the work. Jesus went home, you know that. But when he left, he gave commission to the church. Isn't that right? And by so doing, he said, now, he let us to know before we ever become a part. And if you're here and a sinner, you need to know that uh, it, it, it would be far better to suffer for Christ and go and be with him than to suffer for the cause of Satan and go and live in torment throughout eternity. Verse 25 said, and God has sent me to help his church and to tell his secret plan to you Gentiles. Let me just say here now, we're talking about the mission of the church. All right. The mission of the church. My sisters and brothers, we need to ask God, our Heavenly Father, everyone who have accepted Jesus, uh, to grant us the free spirit. Yeah. I like to be free. And the Lord, I can't even preach where I'm bound because and there are times when 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 the devil would, wouldn't have you to be free. You know that, don't you? But Jesus said when he make us free, we would be free indeed. Now nothing else ought to be able to bind you if you are free in Christ. So we are we are we are to we we as Christians are to ask God to, to, to grant us the free spirit. And that is a giving, I say. Is that right? Even God has demonstrated it to us in our, his incomparable gift of his son. Now you know there has never been a greater gift than Christ. Would you agree with me? And then we need to ask God to help us uh, to realize that, that no gift is complete are you with me? Uh, to 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 him uh, until the giver would have given himself alone with his substance. Now, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that I don't care how much you give if you haven't given Christ you. Your gift is not complete uh, until you've given yourself alone with your substance. I, I, in fact, I, I believe it's backwards. If you try to give that of your substance and refuse to give your sin. So then we need to give ourselves completely to Jesus. And listen, it, it is no problem to give him part of the substance. The thing that makes it so hard for us to give, we have not really surrendered to him. I'm not talking about money now. I'm talking about laying rid of I'm not just talking about money right now. I'm talking about doing something good for those who are in need. I'm not just talking about money now, but I'm talking about doing unto others. Even if they refuse to do to you. I'm not just talking about money. I know some of you thought I was just talking about money. But God needs our service oh, yeah. far more than he needs our money. Oh, yeah. Is that right? Uh -huh. God needs some service from me and you. Yeah. Far more than he needs our little. We don't have that much money. Yes, All right. Is that right? Uh -huh. In the first place, we don't have, listen, what little we have wouldn't really help God anyway. Right. And he said, if I needed something, I wouldn't tell you. So don't you think I'm talking about money? God need us. Yeah. And only for the service in which we can render him. All right. The mission of the church. As, as we best know it, if you please, we know how the Lord suffered. Huh? All right. We know how he offered himself. Isn't that right? Uh, though we, though, though we are weak and sick.
sinful creature. We need to ask him to accept us. And he will, just as you are. Because in his word, I hear him saying, come. Though your sins be black as scarlet, just come. And I can wash them whiter than snow. You see, the problem with us is we try to do the washing before we come. And we mess it up. That you wasn't supposed to wash. Jesus said, just come. Is that right? So then, we, he will accept us if we come just as we are, uh -huh. along with our gifts, and make him uh, to, 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 to have us to know what his holy will is. All right. Is that right? All right? The church and its mission. You see, the church does not choose its own mission. Uh -huh. I, I need to say something right here. The church does not choose its own mission. Is that right? You see, the word mission suggests orders. Would, would you agree with me? It's still a fact anyhow. The word mission suggests orders. Is that right? And what, whenever one is sent on a mission, would you pray with me? Whenever one is sent on a mission or assigned to a task to perform, you need to hear me through. It is understood that he has been given direction. Now what am I saying? I said, when one has been signed to a mission, when one has been given orders, he would have received some direction with the mission and the orders. Is that right? You understand that he's only to be directed as he was given the mission so many times. And we mess it up because we want to do it like we want to do it. But the church, I tell you, and the mission of the church is not up to us to give the direction. Jesus has fully given, given us the direction. Furthermore, one who one who is dispatched to fulfill a mission is not liberty, at liberty to, to change his orders either. Do you hear me talking? Yes, sir. If I tell you and give you orders to go somewhere, ain't as much if, listen, I tell you to go and do something, you need to go do what I told you to do. Right. You don't get out there and change the orders. I don't think y'all see what I'm saying. Yes. Well, you work on these jobs every day. Let me bring it a little closer to home. When you are working on a job and you would have been given orders to go do a certain thing, you don't get halfway and change, rewrite the orders. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. You don't rewrite the orders. The orders was given before you left. Yeah. <laughs> so how much more if Jesus Christ has given us a mission in the church? He's given us orders in the church. And we don't change the mission. We don't change the orders. We don't change the direction. We are not, we are not free to do that. Right. And now we're free to rearrange the assignment. Right. You don't hear me. Uh, You're not free to do that. You're not, you, don't, you don't rearrange it. When you've been given orders, you don't do nothing but go do what you were told to do. Yeah. Yeah. So then, the mission of the church. We have our orders. Is that right? If there is a truth, if there is one truth which is clear in the Holy Scripture, it is that, that God has chosen, you don't get me, people to carry out his plan. Now this is clear to me. And his purpose. God has a plan and a purpose. Is that right? On this earth. God has a plan and a purpose on this earth. And that is through the agency of the church. Do you not know God's purpose and God's plan is to be carried out through the agency of the church? Yes, sir. All right. I mean, you don't act like you understand what I'm talking about. I, I don't really believe you follow me. I said that God's purpose, God's plans are carried out only through the agency of the church. You know, that's how come I can't stand groups that get up and they say, I'm a grouping. 
and we're singing for the Lord. But yes, the way you go to church, oh, we don't go to church, but we'll preach it. <laughs> you group all out of my face because you see, if you if you are a part of the church and its mission, uh-huh. you've got to come under the heading of the church. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, I don't expect for this kind of preaching to make you happy. But at least I hope it makes you sad enough to recognize that when we've been given orders, and surely we have, uh-huh. we don't change in our real ring. Is that right? Yes, sir. We receive them through the agency of the church. But Jesus Christ called it the church. Uh-huh. And there is no other plan that is set forth or even to really imitate his plan. Right. And you can see folks out here trying to imitate the church. Uh-huh. And it don't even come close to church. Is that right? right. If they may be doing good works. But I tell you, you you keep watching it. And the Bible said, the Bible said, and I believe what the scripture said, it too will come to know. Isn't that right? The church and its mission. Oh, I wish I could drive the point home. In our study of the church thus far, we we have examined the nature of the church. And I I, 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 I was interested. I was concerned about the growth of the church. Is that right? Yeah. And the understanding the church should have. Uh-huh. As I come, I told Tracy to come on up here a few minutes ago and sing. Yeah. Because I know God has blessed this child. Yeah. And he blessed us all. Yes, sir. But we've gone contrary. Yeah. All right. So in 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 this message, we shall consider the mission of the church. For the words of our text here, and particularly this passage of scripture that were written, that were read for our uh, understanding, when you look at the book of Colossians, if you please, Paul have co- have a commission from God. All right. In his own words, this is what Paul said, he was commissioned from God. But the essence of God's commission to Paul is identical with that mission which is assigned to the church. Now I read about the mission of of Paul and and when you when you when you look at Paul's mission it's it's, it's identical of that in which God have assigned to the church. Yeah. Thus we shall discuss for a few minutes and I'm going to close the mission of the church and it's first work. All right. The first thing the church is supposed to do is to fulfill uh, the work of God. Yeah. Do you believe that? All right. Secondly, we are to proclaim the mystery yeah. of the indwelling Christ. Right. Well, we need to talk about the mystery of a noun being, of, uh, of this indwelling Christ. And when you have him in you, it's a mystery to others. But it, it needs to be discussed every now and then, the very mystery of the indwelling Christ. Yeah. Thirdly, we are to preach a universal gospel. Uh-huh. You don't just preach here in Wichita, Brother Reed, but you preach everywhere your orders have been given you to go. Is that right? Uh-huh. Now, that's for uh, none preachers alike. If you have been assigned my sisters and brothers, and surely you have if you have accepted you. There's a mission. That's what this bus ministry is doing all the time when they're going trying to compel people to come to Christ. Is that right? Amen. To fulfill the word of God. The church must exalt Jesus Christ. When we go, we don't exalt ourselves, but we must go exalting Jesus Christ. For Christ is before all things. Is that right, Bible scholars? And by him all things consist. For he is the head of the body. That is the church. Christ is the beginning. Would you be with me? Christ is the firstborn from the 
did. You do know he was the first one that got up. So that in all things he might have the premonition for it. He's the Father. All right. That in Him should all fullness dwell. Uh, this is the record, y'all. Notice if you please, for this is one of the most magnificent statements in the whole Bible concerning uh, this portion of our Lord Jesus Christ's work regarding to the church. Yes, yes. It is also established, if you please, Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Paul tells us that Jesus Christ was one with the Father before everything else was. Now maybe you didn't understand what I'm saying. I said Jesus Christ was in existence before everything else was. All right. Is that right? Not only so, but uh, after everything else was created, Jesus Christ, my sisters and brothers, become the one in whom everything is held together. Right. I know that Jesus Christ is responsible for everything being held together. Right. Now, maybe you don't understand that, but let me tell you, without him, this thing would fall to pieces. Uh, this is the way in which the church began. All right. So to make the word of God fully known, we must exalt Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. We must exalt him as being Lord of Lord. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And then King of King. Yes. Would you agree? Uh -huh. Well, if the church is to make the word of God fully known, then we must recognize her role and as a co-labor with God. Yes, that is in the ministry of reconciliation. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. All right. Are you with me? Uh -huh. And by him to be reconciled all things unto himself. But by him, I say, whether, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. All right. Uh, listen, you belong to God. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Don't you not know, even when we didn't know him, we still belong to him. Uh -huh. When we were enemy of the cross, he still made us. Yeah. Is that right? All right. The enemy in in your mind by working wicked works, God still see you, yeah, yeah. and yet now has not been reconciled. God still love you. Yes, sir. Is that right? Uh -huh. and God still want you to accept Him. Yeah. I'm talking about the mission of the church. Yes, well, just what did what did happen when the people sinned? Now we know, we know, we know that when God made man, He made him uh, the way he should be. All right. But now all of us know something went haywire. Yes, sir. Is that right? All right? Just what happened? Now we need to discuss a few minutes what happened, and I'm gonna close. Something sure did happen all right. when the people sinned. For the most tragic that the world has ever known came about when Adam and Eve succumbed to do uh, and be tempted uh, to go contrary to God's will in the garden. Yes. Yes. In the garden of Edom, you know what happened. Yes. There were no enemies there, not until after they had gone contrary. Yes. The lambs and the little babies could lay down together. Yes. There was no trouble going on until after that sin had taken place. Is that right? right. You don't hear anything about lambs and bows had to be caged up. Not until after that great sin. Yes. What really did happen? Well, for there was a moral explosion, I 
about that. Yeah. I don't. You talk, you talking about you talking about contrary? Something happened in the garden, yeah. and immediately God, who had rested when God made man and made everything He made, you know what He did the seventh day? Yes. Everything was in order and everything was supposed to be intact. God, the Bible say, rested yeah. after He had made everything. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So you won't. Not, have y'all ever read this? Yeah. Right. After God took him six days and put this business together, yeah. the seventh day He took His rest. Uh -huh. Now I would like to see that as as of the farmers when you know those of you who have farmed you know how the farmers would do their work and when they would have laid the crop back yeah. they have some free time god had made everything that was existing and the seventh day he made for himself and decided that he would rest all right yeah. is that right mm -hmm. but here was a moral explosion took taking place all right. uh, in the garden. Don't you know immediately when God began to rest, he couldn't rest. All right. He wanted to rest from his created way. On the seventh day, you know he did. But he, after immediately after this moral explosion, my sisters and brothers, God had to begin a new way. And that was figure out a way how to bring his hope back to him. Oh, I wish you could see this. All right. I wish you could see this. I wish you could see this. God searched the earth in his attempt trying to find somebody to go to bring his folk back to him oh, yeah. after they had wandered away in the garden. Is that right? And uh, notice here, yeah, God, I said, attempted a new work. This was the work of redemption. And the end results of which was to be reconciliation and bringing back uh, to himself that which had been separated from him. Yeah. And don't you not know when one has been separated from Christ, the Lord uses every, every meaning he has yeah. to try to bring that individual back. Oh, yeah. right. You don't want them to come back. I know that. You would rather see them go on to hell. But God used everything in his power. Right. Simply because he's married to the backslider. And you can't believe, you can't make me believe that God don't use all he has to bring one back to him. If he would use his only son. And you can't make me believe the price is too high for God to pay. To bring the wandering soul back to him. And don't try to get mad when you see folks coming back, but the devil. Is that right? Yeah. Ain't nobody mad but Satan. Satan is the only one who hates to see him walk coming to Christ. Yes, sir. But Jesus will use every, every effort he has. And you know what? A sure enough real Christian will too. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Lord, help me through here. So here, when then to further, if you please, to further the compound mystery of God's sovereign grace, God made another another effort. Isn't that right? And he made another decision in regard to this business of reconciliation. For he decided then to use the church now. You didn't hear anything about the church before all that commotion in the garden. Is that right? right? But after the commotion in the garden, God decided to make him a church. Is that right? And in this mystery, for Paul said, and all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the mystery of reconciliation. Well, what is this? For it is God saying to the church, this is of our part of our mission. Yeah. That is here on earth. For we are to be co-laborers with God. Yeah. In this mystery of bringing sinners face to face 
with their sin. This is what we're to do, y'all. And with God's saving grace, it becomes our obligation, our responsibility. God has told us to go and tell sinners and bring them face to face with their sin. You can't sugarcoat it. But you have you got to do that with love. And you need to let them to know when you talk to them that God so loved them. Not scorned them, but God loved them. Is that right? So the church and its mission, the church must be constantly encouraged through growing and being stable in her mission. Jesus said, if you continue in the faith, now, I read that. If you are grounded and settled in him yes. and be not moved away with uh, uh, strange doctrine. All right. All right. Is that right? Yes, sir. And if you will keep the hope of the gospel in your heart, yes. ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Now, we read that. He said he was made a minister, didn't he? Uh -huh. Well, you read Colossians 1, 23. He said, I was made a minister. Uh -huh. And now, what is Paul really saying? When a person, when a person is newborn into the family of God. Y'all yeah. need to hear me, Christians. I want y'all to hear this. Uh -huh. When a, a one has been born as a new creature in the church of the family of God. It is the urgent task of the church member uh, to immediately to set about to teach this individual All right. and to establish the new Christian in the faith. Yes, sir. For many young Christians have got off on doctrinal tantrums. Sometimes they become confused. And the Lord is going to hold some of us responsible for that mess because it becomes our obligation to put our arms around them and teach them the word of God. Yes, sir. There are many new Christians never really get off the ground. But the church ought to take the word of God to those particular individuals and then put our arms around them. Yeah. Prop them up spiritual, not criticize them. I don't think you hear what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Notice, yeah, if you please, first of all, my sisters and brothers, look at here with me. The church uh, that makes the word of God fully known uh, to those who come to Christ, when we do this in teaching, uh, the word of God and in pastoral ministry, then you will see a people growing in grace. All right. Is that right? All right? And that is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. You will see a people who will become established and settled in the faith. Yeah. Not carried about with every wind and doctrine. Yeah. For you see, to proclaim the mystery of the indwelling spirit. And I'm talking about Christ now. Paul said that I have even the mystery which has been hid from ages, which have been hid for generations, but now is made manifest even to the saints. To whom you would make known uh, uh, the riches and the glory of God. Oh, yeah. So then, the Gentiles, which is in Christ, Paul is saying here yeah, that uh, you have a hope. Yeah. Uh -huh. Paul tells us that this mystery of Christ indwelling spirit in us, and that's talking about believers. Is that right? Uh, it was a time uh, in the ages past, through the prophets and the Old Testament, there were symbols and, and sacrifices and types that were made. Yeah. So God, here were preparing 
his people for this grand, magnificent truth. Yeah. So that he would one day come to live with his people in the persons of his own son. Furthermore, yeah. this truth about Christ in you, the hope of glory, has been made manifest. Paul yeah. Phillips said that uh, it made it very clear here, yeah, even today, when we look about us, uh, it was a time when the, the Lord winked at ignorance. Yeah. But I tell you, no more, Father. Uh, we have uh, the opportunity to know for ourselves. Uh, but when uh, you see, you know that uh, it's happening all about us. Uh, there are those who say that uh, we don't really know what the Lord want us to do. Uh, but I want to tell you that uh, the Lord uh, has made uh, the mission so plain uh, until a fool will not ever. Yeah, yeah. The first down payment. Uh, uh -huh. Of this work uh, is the proof uh, of Jesus Christ, right. the hope of glory, uh, that uh, he come and fulfilled his mission uh, and took the wings of the wind. Yeah. And uh, he said, uh, and I won't leave you comfortless, but uh, oh, no. I'll send you another comfort. Right. Well, uh, for the sun is rising in ever. One of us who will allow the Lord to come in our hearts. Oh, yeah. The mission of the church is, first of all, to preach the universal gospel. Yeah. It is a universal gospel for Paul said, whom we preach, not preach ourselves, but no, no. preach Jesus Christ and, and him who crucified. Yeah. Warning every man and every boy and every girl that Jesus died for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, this gospel is not to be declared uh, to just a select few but to every group everywhere in the world. Uh -huh. It is uh, to be declared in the power of God. Uh, you know what happened on Mars Hill uh, at that Athens. Yeah. Paul uh, declared and uh, said that uh, in times of your ignorance, God winked at it. Uh -huh. yeah. But now uh, he has commanded uh, all men everywhere to repent uh, of their sins. Yeah. All right. oh, and I'm yeah. telling you, you this evening that uh, if you don't know Jesus, you need to repent of your sins. Yeah, yeah. And I want to tell you this evening that. Uh, the Lord is coming back after his church. Yeah. You know, and I'm making no mistake about it, for he's coming back after the church without a spot or ring of. Yeah, yeah. And even uh, there may be those who will tell you that I can go to heaven outside of the church. Oh, no. But I want to tell you that uh, you must take a part of of the mission of the church if you want to go and live with him. Yeah. Am I right about it? Oh, no. oh Lord, you power. It is also a warning that we are supposed to warn them that Jesus is coming back for the church. Oh, yeah. Everywhere you go, you need to tell men that Jesus loved them. Yes, sir. You need to tell them that uh, the Lord so loved them until he gave his own life. Yeah. And I hear him saying that no man takes my life from me, but I, I lay it down on my own. Yeah. I want to tell you, if you don't know him, uh, you need to tell him today, Lord, come in my life. Yeah. Don't you know that uh, Jesus is coming back after his church, my friend? Yeah. No wonder he said that uh, in my father's house are many mentions. Yeah. Oh, Lord, if it was not so, I would have told you. I'm going away and prepare a place for you. And, yeah. and if I go away, I'll come back again and receive you until my that oh. Where I am, that ye may be also. Yeah. If you're here this evening and don't know Jesus, 
do you need to come to him while the blood is running warm in your veins? After a while, preaching days will all be over. After a while, praying days will all be over. After a while, the crowd won't have to sing no more. Yeah. Oh, Lord, won't you be glad? Thank <laughs> you. 
He surely brought them in. and its mission Colossians 1 chapter 1 verses 23 through 25 also let me just mention this the musicians that you heard on there they're also late musicians as well too Betty Fields was on the piano and the late Carl Wright was on the organ and of course if you heard the saxophone coming through yes that was me in my younger days I forgot who was on the drums but we had a pretty good musical staff back in that day. But I hope you have enjoyed this edition of Sermon from the Vault. Until the next time, have a blessed day, evening or night. Mm-hmm.